In terms of Egypt's political development, right now they're facing a severe problem of political polarization, where you have demonstrations and counter demonstrations which are leading to instability. There is a, a, a caretaker government which has promised to move Egypt through the wickets of a nine month transition process that would return them to civilian rule, but there could be many obstacles in the way. I believe that um, any honest definition of a coup would say that what transpired was a coup. Uh, the military took power, suspended the constitution, took control of the flagship newspaper, and started a crackdown on what was the ruling authorities. I think that meets the definition of a coup. But I understand the administ administration's desire to play some linguistic gymnastics because declaring it a coup would, would trip a legal requirement that aid be suspended to Egypt. I believe the aid doesn't give the United States as much leverage as it might believe because it's a very small share of the Egyptian economy because Egypt has other uh, countries that can go to for aid. So for example, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait recently pledged $12 billion as opposed to the $1.5 billion in annual aid that the U.S. traditionally gives Egypt. Um, and the United States seeks some things from Egypt, for example, strategic benefits like expedited transit through the Suez and overflight. And so all that works against U.S. leverage. In terms of the main takeaway of the briefing, I would say there's some very difficult policy choices facing Congress. And those policy choices range from suspending assistance, both military and economic in its entirety, to more incremental steps like changing the composition of the aid or the way we deliver it or strengthening conditionality. So what I want people to take away from this event is, hey, there's serious policy challenges, they come with choices, and we can have a sensible, informed uh, uh, discussion about this.